Welcome back, Seth Bling here. One of the hardest parts of writing my physics engine data pack was collision detection between oriented cubes. When I was working on it, I really wished I had someone to explain how to do it, so I decided to make a video doing just that. For this video, I wrote a data pack that will help us visualize the separating axis theorem. You're looking at the same pair of cubes, copied 15 times, being projected onto 15 different axes. The separating axis theorem says that if two cubes aren't in contact, then there must be some plane that separates them. For example, if we look at these two cubes, I can look at them from a certain angle and we can see the plane that separates them. If we look at the axis that's perpendicular to that plane, that's the separating axis. By projecting the two cubes down onto that one dimensional axis, that is moving each point on the cubes to the closest point on the axis, we can quickly and efficiently calculate the extents of those two cubes and see if they overlap on that axis. If there's a gap between them, then the two cubes aren't colliding. Now let me shift the two cubes a little bit closer together so that they're interpenetrating. Now there's no longer a plane that separates the cubes. The separating axis theorem gives you a set of 15 axes you can check. And if none of those axes show any separation, then the cubes must be interpenetrating. It's not just 15 random axes though, they're very specific ones. The first three axes are the three normals of the blue cube. So for example, this first axis is the normal of this face of the cube. The second axis here is the normal of this face of the cube. And the third axis is the normal of this face of the cube. The second set of three axes are the normals of the purple cube. So for example, the first axis here is the normal of this face of the cube and ditto for the other two. The final set of nine axes are the cross products of one axis from the blue cube and one axis from the purple cube. Since there are three axes on each cube, there is a total of nine different cross products. A cross product of two vectors produces a third vector that's perpendicular to both of them. So for example, this axis is the cross product of the normal of this face from the blue cube and this face from the purple cube. In total, we end up with 15 axes to test. And if the cubes projected onto those 15 axes don't show any separation, then the cubes must be interpenetrating. For a physics engine, just knowing that the two cubes are colliding isn't enough though. You also need to be able to separate them. And these 15 axes can help with that too. By looking at these 15 axes and finding the axis with the minimum overlap, we can immediately determine how to separate the two cubes. The axis of minimum overlap is the direction that you should move them, and the amount that they overlap is the amount that you should move them. And the cool thing is that this movement is guaranteed to be the smallest possible movement that you can make to separate the two cubes. You can also tell which features of the cubes are interpenetrating. For a physics engine, there are two types of collisions you need to worry about. There is corner face collisions like this, where the corner of one cube is penetrating into the face of another cube. And then there's edge edge collisions like this, where the edges of two cubes are colliding. If the minimum overlap occurs on one of these nine axes, then you know that it's an edge edge collision. You can also determine which edges on each cube are colliding. For this cube, it will be one of the four edges that's parallel to the normal used for the cross product. You just pick whichever of those four edges is closest to the other cube along the axis. And it's exactly the same for the other cube. If the minimum overlap occurs on one of these three axes, then it's a collision between a face on this cube and a corner of this cube. You can tell which face of the cube is colliding because it will be one of the two faces that's along the normal that we use for the axis, whichever is closest to the other cube. The corner from this cube that's colliding will just be whichever corner is closest to the other cube along the axis. And then if the minimum overlap occurs in one of these three axes, it's the same, but the cubes are swapped and it'll be a face from this cube and a corner from this cube. All in all, the separating axis theorem gives you everything you need to test for and resolve collisions between oriented boxes. And it's possible to do all of these computations very quickly. Hope you learned something new. That's about it. Thanks for watching.